We human beings spend on average one third of our lives asleep. We know we need to sleep, but most of us have never really given a whole lot of thought to why. Why do we spend seven or eight hours a night immobile and unconscious? What really happens inside our brains and bodies while we're sleeping? As we first reported this spring, it's one of the biggest unanswered questions in all of science, which is why researchers all over the country are doing studies and coming up with some new, intriguing discoveries. We don't sleep just to rest our tired bodies? Well, that's been one of the long-standing theories, but I think what we're starting to understand is that sleep serves a whole constellation of functions, plural. One thing that's clear, says Matthew Walker, director of the Sleep and Neuroimaging Lab at the University of California, Berkeley, is sleep is critical. In a series of studies done back in the 1980s, rats were kept awake indefinitely. After just five days, they started dying. From sleep deprivation. From sleep deprivation. And in fact, sleep is as essential as food because they they will die just about as quick from food deprivation as sleep deprivation. So it's that, it's that necessary. And it's not just rats. Every animal studied so far needs sleep, from the elephant right down to the fruit fly. But that's as far as the similarities go. Some animals sleep 20 hours a day, others just two or three, and still others sleep with half their brains at a time all making it hard to figure out what exactly it is about sleep that makes it so essential, and that, in terms of evolution, makes it worth the risks. You wonder why we develop this if survival is the whole point, because you're completely vulnerable when you're lying there. Whatever the function of sleep or the functions of sleep are, they seem to be so important. Evolution is willing to put us in that place of potential danger by losing consciousness. It would be the biggest evolutionary mistake if sleep does not serve some critical function. You will ebb and flow throughout these kind of next 15 hours. One of the most exciting new discoveries involves learning and memory. How many hours I'm counting till I go to sleep now? These five college students are subjects in one of Walker's studies, and they've been awake now for more than 24 hours. He has found that students like these do 40% worse memorizing lists of words after a night without sleep. But he has discovered something far more revolutionary about what happens when we do sleep. Sleep, we, we've been finding, actually can enhance your memories so that you will come back the next day even better than where you were the day before. So if I'm having this conversation with you, yep. and of course I'm going to remember it, I'd in hope. 10 minutes. But you're saying if I get a good night's sleep tonight, I'll remember it even better tomorrow than I do later today? That's what we've been finding. To prove it, he put me through a test he's given more than 400 study subjects. I had to type a series of numbers, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, over and over again with my left hand, making a new physical memory. It's hard. It's not as easy as you think, is it? Gets harder. Oops. Some of Walker's subjects learned this sequence in the morning, then were tested 12 hours later to see how well they had learned. Their performance remained essentially the same. But others learned it late in the day, then were retested after a night of sleep. Their performance, and mine, actually got better by at least 20 to 30 percent. So it proves that the sleep enhance the memory. So it seems to be that, yeah, yeah, practice does not quite make perfect. It's practice with a night of sleep that makes perfect. Who so. didn't spend all college staying up all night to study for a test? Everybody does that. It's this odd notion that we all think in Western civilization that we have to stay awake to get more done. And I think that's simply not true. In fact, I think if you have a good night of sleep, what you'll find is that you can get more done than if you simply stay awake. One thing sleep researchers do see is that their sleep-deprived volunteers often have mood swings. They get short-tempered. Okay. No need to chuck the little finger. There was no chucking. <laughs> <laughs> then become almost giddy, sometimes within seconds. Matthew Walker devised a study to look at what was going on inside their brains. We took a group of young uh, college undergraduates and we deprived them of sleep for about 35 hours straight and then we placed them inside an MRI scanner 
and we showed them increasingly negative and disturbing images. In fact, some of the images that we showed were even more disturbing than this, such as um, mutilations or Ooh. horrific accidents. And what we found was that in those people who had had a good night of sleep, the control group, mm -hmm. they showed a nice, modest, controlled response in the emotional centers of the brain to orient you here a region that we call the amygdala, left and right. And we can actually take a snapshot within that region. So this brain had a good night's sleep. But when we looked in the sleep-deprived subjects, instead what we found was a hyperactive brain response. It looks right. like it's on fire. So it tells us that that emotional brain center was reacting far more strongly mm -hmm. to those negative images. And what's more, in the sleep-deprived subjects, Walker discovered a disconnect between that overreacting amygdala and the brain's frontal lobe, the region that controls rational thought and decision-making, meaning that the subject's emotional responses were not being kept in check by the more logical seat of reasoning, a problem also found in people with psychiatric disorders. So you're saying that you take someone with a severe mental disorder and a person without that disorder, but deprive them of sleep, and the brain scan will look similar? The pattern of brain activity was not dissimilar. So I think what it forces us to do really now is to appreciate more significantly the role that sleep may be playing in mental health and in psychiatric diseases. And I think that that could be one of the futures of the field of sleep research. Walker says most of us need seven and a half to eight hours of sleep every night. And if we don't get it, as you'll see when we come back, we could end up fat and sick.